I was thinking about a dog again. Not too big this time, but not too small either. Not real high energy, one that likes to take walks, yes, but one that would also like to snooze on the chair beside me while I read. It won't chew shoes or furniture, won't shed much, won't bark much. A friend who knew of this interest then began sending us links to pet finder pages that Richard and I studied looking at photos and profiles of adorable, adoptable dogs. Dogs displaying a narrow range of expression from playful to forlorn. Those photos opened our hearts further to the possibility of canine adoption, though I was still reticent. I have loved some big dogs truly and well, though I don't miss the slobber and the hair. I don't miss driving a smelly dog crate with clouded windows or a wagging tail that could sweep wine glasses and entire cheese plate off the cocktail table, just out. So I was inclined this time to adopt a dog that fits under the airplane seat. A dog that can accompany us when we travel instead of racking up boarding fees at home. Nothing overly fluffy or feminine, but something fun and scrappy, like maybe a Jack Russell. The first dogs from my childhood belonged to our next door neighbors, German immigrants who spoke accented English. Their dachshunds' names were Hansi und Gretchen. One black and the other a reddish brown. I remember the feel of their short, oily coats and the sound of all those dachshund toenails clicking along the pavement when I passed on my tricycle. They were friendly and all, but Hansi and Gretchen smelled sort of weird and they grew fatty tumors and I'd never really imagined them as pets. At the other end of the block lived an old woman who carried an old chihuahua in her purse. And it was a dog with cloudy cataracts and an underbite. A dog who didn't see you and start barking until you were just inches away. I thought that nasty little dog had soured me on chihuahuas, a prejudice that didn't lift for decades, until I got acquainted with Oliver and Dottie, chihuahua mixes belonging to friends of ours that are crossed respectively with a rat terrier and a Boston Terrier, the, the dogs, not the friends. <laughs> Ollie and Dot are friendly and funny and full of energy. They run and they jump and they wrestle and they tumble and they swim in the Hudson River wearing tiny life jackets. <laughs> they are circus dogs who bring the circus wherever they go. And so there we were about to adopt a Chihuahua mix mutt from Louisiana whose foster mother had named it Bubbles. <laughs> This sort of worried me. Adopting a small dog is one thing, but Bubbles was the name of Michael Jackson's pet chimp. It was the nickname of opera soprano Beverly Sills, the name of a drunken clown. Bubbles was the fat girl in high school with personality, the one who starred as the matchmaker in the school play. It's a beer-bellied redneck in a ripped t-shirt, or a cartoon hippo in a ballerina skirt, an adult elderly aunt or a character, a, a demented character in a John Waters film, it, we could not possibly have a dog named Bubbles. <laughs> I expressed this concern and others to my friend Julie, adding, and I don't want Richard and me to become a cultural stereotype. But you already are a cultural stereotype, she replied. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't want us to be the gay men with the small dog. But you are the gay men with the small dog, she said. <laughs> All right, but this dog isn't going to be some pathetic stand-in for a missing child, and you won't see it at the end of my leash wearing a sweater or a raincoat. He'll wear a life jacket when we're out in the kayak, maybe, but not a raincoat. <laughs> a moment later, I was looking at chihuahua coats on the internet. <laughs> Pictures of tiny dogs wearing fleece hoodies and goggles and leather bomber jackets, Dalmatian prints. I took hold of myself and closed that browser page and then opened a new one to order something I had no doubts about, an ID tag. Nothing cute, nothing clever, no bright colors or bone shapes, just a plain, small, round, stainless tag with my name and phone number. The dog to be formerly known as Bubbles didn't know it yet, but he already had a phone number and a home. Thanks.